The first time I heard about the concept of studying abroad, I knew I wanted to do it. Getting to go to another country to study for a semester seemed like a no-brainer to me. Because I knew I wanted to do this, I looked early on, attending the study abroad fair my freshman year. English was one of the majors I was considering, so when I saw an English program at Wake's house on the Grand Canal, I knew I wanted to apply. I had only heard about juniors going abroad, so I set up an appointment at the study abroad office. The program seemed perfect for me, but now I just had to know, could I go abroad as a sophomore? Turns out I could. When I got my acceptance, I was ecstatic. There were only 20 spots, and I had been nervous for months that I wouldn't get one, especially because rising juniors had seniority. I also knew a lot of them planned out studying abroad with their friends. None of my friends at the time had even mentioned studying abroad. When I went to my orientation, I realized that I didn't know anyone on my program. I hadn't even seen any of these people around before. I would be spending four months overseas with complete strangers. Not to mention I had never been to Europe before. I knew common travel tips like always be aware of your surroundings, but I knew nothing about the culture of Europe or how to navigate it. I didn't have the comfort of, I've been here before. On day one of my study abroad journey, the realities of traveling hit. My flight to Venice got delayed, and delayed some more, until it finally got canceled, forcing every passenger on the large international flight to have to rebook themselves on the already packed flights leaving tomorrow, all at once, at 4 a.m. It was a really stressful experience as I was trying to stay on the same flight as the two other students going to Casa Artem, but it definitely taught me a lesson about flying. I learned to accept the inconvenience and try to make the most of it instead. I'll get to my destination eventually. It was more than worth the wait. The view coming into the city was truly breathtaking. It was a view I tried to never take for granted during my semester there. Venice was such a unique city in that most of it's only walkable, so one of my favorite things to do was simply walk around Venice to take in its beauty, to explore new, less touristy parts, to just truly experience the indescribable magic that lies in the city. I also tried out the various restaurants, coffee shops, and gelato spots with my friends for a taste of the cuisine. We even had the chance to experience local traditions like the regatta and salute day. But my favorite part about Venice isn't the things to do, it's the city itself. I could marvel at the buildings and canals forever. Not only that, but there is also a certain aura about the city. It's truly magical. Studying abroad was the most incredible experience of my life, and I sincerely miss it every day. It really didn't matter that I was a sophomore. This only meant I had two full years to figure everything out when I got back to campus. Not knowing anyone on my program forced me to socialize with everyone and get outside of my comfort zone. I got to give everyone a chance because I didn't have a clique already made, and I ended up meeting some of my close friends abroad. Seeing Europe for the first time in this way made it all the more magical and truly allowed me to grow as I navigated completely foreign cities. This included cities I had never thought about visiting, like Paris, which I had always thought to be overrated. One of my new friends wanted to go, though, so I agreed anyway. It ended up being one of my favorite trips abroad and still remains one of my favorite cities in the world. My advice? Always keep an open mind. You're just a sophomore? Don't know anyone? Never been to Europe? Never wanted to go to that city? Say yes anyway. You may just have the best experience of your life.